Welcome to CivilCAD Learning Solutions Productivity Help Videos. In this video, we're going to go over the Payment Quantities Command Feature Tools. So here I have a typical site plan showing pavement hatching. So if you've ever worked with pavement hatching, sometimes you have to create calculations for the amount of concrete thickness or square footage of pavement. So this tool does, it actually calculates and creates a dynamic table for you based on pavement hatching. So let's go ahead and run through the command. So when I go to the actual ribbon under CCLS tools, then click on payment quantities. I'm going to highlight and create a window selection box to select all the hatches within the window, or you can manually select the ones you want to pick. I'll click enter. It's asking me for an insertion point. Now I did find one error at the bottom it says hatch errors. I'm going to click it. And if you create a hatch pattern based on a area, not create by selecting a boundary, anything, but just picking an area that's enclosed, sometimes you have areas where it creates an overlapping boundary line. For example, when I go to zoom and say select, this one was created by just a closed enclosed area. But if I zoom in really closely, you can see here that this line actually uh, created a loop here. So it actually crosses here and creates another loop. So I'm just going to grab that grip for that boundary of that hatch and move it back to here and hit the update button. This typically happens in little curb return areas like this when I was creating these hatches. So now let's go back to my table. Now here's my table. Now here it's actually just putting a pavement name. That's actually the hatch name. But I can actually override that like a typical AutoCAD table. I have my quantities here. So for example, if I want to, let's say, remove this particular hatch pattern from the table, I can click on the edit button, select the table, and then say remove and pick those two hatch patterns and enter and OK. And notice here, oh, I think I did miss one. Let's hit the update button. And it looks like I may have missed one. Um, there's one right here. Let me go back to the table and say remove. And there was one more here at the bottom. And now I'll click OK. And notice here that your hatch pattern is now gone. Now I can always come back and add it. So if I click on edit and then select add, I can come back and select that hatch pattern and click OK. Now it's back in there. I can go back to the edit button also when I click it, click the table and say include square yards or cubic yards and click OK. It's now including the square yards and cubic yards for my each particular pavement style. I can apply a thickness so if I click on the edit button, click the table, and over here, I can, I'm not going to follow any kind of standards. I'm just typing in so you can see what's actually happening, what you'll do. OK, and click OK. And then my numbers will now automatically update. I can also include a cost. So if you want to do, you actually want to get calculation construction costs of your pavement. If I go back and click Edit, click the table, check this again and say include cost and I only want it for uh, cubic yards. Now you actually, let's say I am including the square yards, cubic yards, but here to the right I can select which which unit I want to apply the cost to. So gravel could be square yards but the actual concrete could be cubic yards so each here has a, uh, a pull down and you can assign this for every particular hatch pattern and click OK and let it update. And there we go. Now, what if I wanted to automatically always update the table based on deleting a hatch or updating a hatch? So I'm going to come back into the edit tool. And there's actually a setting in here. It says add new hatches. I'm going to click OK now. 
nothing's going to happen. So now every time I create a new hatch or remove a hatch, it's now going to update dynamically this table. So I'm going to hatch this area. Now this concrete pavement hatch right here, which is the concrete, it's 26,182 cubic yards. I'm going to match that same style now. And when I now just come up here and hit the update button, you can see that quantity updated automatically and the cost. So you'll always need to remember to hit the update button. It just doesn't automatically do it. But every time I add a new hatch, when I hit the update button, now the table will automatically update. I can now delete this. And when I hit the update button, you'll see here that it will update that quantity for concrete. Now you can create a template. So every time you create a table, it's pulling from your company standard let's say naming convention per the hatch. So for example, I've actually created one. I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to browse to one up top here and it says process and also says open pavement mapping or edit pavement matching. So here, if I want to create my own, I can create one, click in here and create my own standard. But I actually already have one created. I'm going to browse to one that I've already created. I'll click open. There's one right here. It's pavement legend. So there it is. I'm going to hit apply and I'm going to pick the actual units for each one of these. For now I'm just setting these up. And what I did is actually I signed a name for each like each particular pavement style. So for example concrete well my concrete hatch is actually parking and drive aisles. The angled style part hatch is private, uh, private sidewalk. So I'm going to click OK. Now my table has automatically updated. Notice that the naming convention is now matched with the pavement style. So when you're dealing with payment quantities, this is a great tool to cut down on actual calculations and using spreadsheets, you can use this table. Now there is, this is a basic AutoCAD um, table, so you can actually click on it, right click and say export, and you can export it to a CSV file or a spreadsheet. So hopefully this helps answer a lot of your questions about using the payment quantity app in the CivilCAD Learning Solutions Productivity Suite Tools.